So in this video, we're going to talk about how to compile your C code on a Mac. Now, a lot of the things you're going to do, the source code itself, the command you use to compile and so forth are the same, whether you're using a Mac or Linux or Sigwin or something like that. But there's some slight differences to actually getting started. And so I want to make sure that we cover those. So before you try to compile any C code, you need to first install Xcode. That brings you the C compiler. And you'll need a text editor capable of saving ASCII text. And there's lots of choices there. The text edit app that comes with Mac OS will work, but I'm not sure how you start it up to save a, a C file, but you can create a C file and then open it there. And we'll show you that at the end of the video. And then you'll need a terminal to actually run your commands. So the setup I'm using today as an example is a Mac mini computer. It's an M1 from 2020, and I'm running Big Sur 11.5.2. However, these same directions should work with any version of Mac OS that you can still get running. This is pretty much the same thing that I did on my previous Mac Pro from 2009. So even if you have an older version or even a newer version, everything should be mostly the same once you get started. Now I'm using MacVim as my editor. You can use any editor you want as long as it will generate ASCII text. Uh, MacVim is just the one that I choose because I use VI on, on Linux and so it's a natural editor for me to use on Mac. And then the built-in Mac OS terminal that comes with Mac OS is fine. I use iTerm2 because when I first started using a Mac many years ago, someone recommended that that's the best terminal to use. And so I've been using it ever since, but I don't have a really good reason to use it other than that's just what I've always used. So it's optional, but if there's any differences with what the terminal shows, that's the reason. But again, the actual Mac terminal would be fine for any of this. So the first thing we need to do is create our work directory, and that's where we're going to save our files. So we'll open up a finder window. And you can see I have some existing folders. Now, if you don't have your home folder listed, you may want to add it to your favorites. And in the finder menu, you can click go and then select home. And that'll bring up your home folder. And I would recommend keeping it here just because that gives you a quick way to get to those files. And the terminal is going to open in your home folder by default. Now, I'm going to create a new folder for my code. And I'll just call it code. You can call it whatever you want. And that's where I'll store the code I write. So we have this folder code and let me move that over here so that we're able to see it once we start writing our programs. And now I'm going to open up a editor window and I'm going to type a quick C program. And you notice when I try to save it, it says no file name. So I'm going to want to go to file, save as, or actually saves would work as well since this is the first time I'm saving it. And I'm going to save it in code, and then I'm going to give it the name MacExample.c. And you notice in Finder now you can see that MacExample.c and my C code is written. So now let's open up a terminal. And PWD says print working directory. It tells me where I am and you can see that I'm in my home folder. If I do an LS, it shows me what files are there in directories. And notice there's my code directory. So I'll CD to code and then I'll spell it right. And if I do an LS, there's MacExample.c. To compile this program, I say GCC standard equals C11, all warnings, pedantic, and the name of the file. And it's compiled it. So if I do an LS, you can see there's a.out and Mac example. And actually, you can see that in Finder as well. So to run, I do dot slash a.out, and you can see it executes the code. Now, just as a heads up, Mac OS doesn't actually come with GCC. GCC is an alias to a different compiler. However, since the examples we use in Linux are all GCC, it's fine to use this alias and all the commands we use should work the same. All of the examples have been tested on, on Mac OS compiled with GCC, so you shouldn't run into any trouble. Now, one other thing, if you want to just use the built-in text edit, you don't want to install any other programs. If you right click on an existing C file, you can open with text edit and there it is. So this will let you use the built-in stuff. You don't have to install anything extra. Now, the problem I run into is if I open up text edit, I have trouble saving it as a C file or a text file. And so one thing you can do is in the terminal, once you get to wherever you want to go, you can touch next program.c or whatever your file name is. And notice that shows up in terminal and you can right click that open with text edit and you can start typing your program there. So either way, it's up to you. Again, the editor itself doesn't matter. The important part is that you generate these characters so that you can see that program in the terminal, and then you can compile and execute it there. 